What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to uh, the, the the first Smash Talk in a while. Uh, it's the election night special. Pizza Dude Man Guy and I are going to sit here and read off the uh, the result of the midterm 2018 elections as they roll in. I just put in my ballot about 40 minutes ago. I put mine in a long time ago. I'm also, <laughs> I'm also well. I'm also on the East Coast, so I'm oh, just kind of yes. I'm just kind of ahead so of you. You kind of had to do it a little earlier. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um, we're not actually going to talk about that today. Uh, that would no. be a close to like a four-hour video at least if we just waited for all the results to come in. Point is, yep. uh, we are here to discuss the final roster of, uh, of Smash Ultimate and then what we think is going to happen moving forward with DLC. Um, because it's, I mean, they've, they announced that there will be DLC. Uh, but right. first off, let's just uh, talk about just kind of the final direct and the the fallout and just kind of <laughs> everything that's happened i don't know if fallout yeah. was, I, I didn't mean to imply that it was bad that's not what i meant no but, but i just no. mean like yeah everything coming off it um although I there mean, were some people who were very upset yeah i mean character wise man you know people set them up some set themselves up some pretty strange expectations because pretty much going into it I mean, besides the people who stayed completely spoiler-free, which, I mean, props to those people. I don't, uh, I don't know how people, you manage in this day and age, yeah, unless you just don't have an internet presence. That's amazing. Um, but, like, there were pretty much two mindsets going in. There was the people who, um, you know, believed in the word of the people who claimed they have inside knowledge, uh, who said that Incineroar and Ken are definite newcomers, and beyond that, we're pretty sure... Either that's it, or just we don't know. And then you got the people who believed the Grinch leak, which claimed that we would see in this single direct Ken and Shadow and Isaac and Mock Rider and like two other people. Yeah, well, yeah, it was it was debatable whether it was either five or seven characters based on if you thought Skull oh, Kid was right, also there. Oh, right, because so many people commented to me, look, that's Skull Kid's mask under Mock Rider's bike. And I'm like, I, I don't see it at all, man. <laughs> I could I could, I could, kind of see it, um, but it doesn't matter because uh, that wound up being fake. No, it wound up being totally fake. And like, I didn't want to rule it out because... I, I mean, think Banjo-Kazooie is the one It looked forgot. pretty good... And I didn't want to go like, well, I know I'm right. But, like, I was pretty sure it was fake. Well, what I was always saying was, like, it definitely had a lot of work put into it. Um, oh, yeah. But it wasn't inconceivable that it could be faked as well. And the one That thing was that the thing. So many people, to me, were like, uh, like, this can't possibly be faked. And I'm like, it, it, it is possible. I always thought it was Clearly. shifty. And then this is... <laughs> going back in like the discord like in the initial discord discussion i always thought it was weird that like it was blurry and i don't mean like the photo because a lot of times you know the whole like blurry photo leak is like kind of a thing where like oh they blur it to make it seem more authentic blur um, is like the number is but the like first what I, thing i look at any image for that's immediately suspicious if something's blurry because blur is such an easy way to hide detail mistakes but like what i thought was weird about it was that the picture's quality wasn't actually that bad like it wasn't actually that blurry no. But the the actual image on the band was blurry, yeah. Uh, and so so I, I I was like, I just didn't feel like an official product would have that shoddy of a print job, because so I was like, this isn't a blurry photo. This is just the line art on the actual printed product being like really like messed up. And and, and I was like, I can't imagine them being okay with like, like any client being okay with that being like the product that they get. Um, I'm kind of bummed that it was fake. Uh, just because well, all those characters are characters I would love to have. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it would have been awesome if it was real, but, you know. But, yeah, it's the way it is. What are you going to do about it? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, there, there were a lot of people who were, like, genuinely upset. Um, and I... I don't know, man. I, I, I guess the main thing is that, you know, when, when it comes to the roster, I guess they didn't save the best for last. I suppose. Yeah. Like, if... I mean, my thinking on there all... Because, I mean, we've known for, for a long time with things like the box theory and, and the insiders that it was possible Ken and Incineroar would be the last newcomers. And even back then, you know, I, also... I always thought, I always thought, well, maybe they wanted to pull out the big guns first so that those didn't get leaked. 
right? King K. Rule never got leaked, and so he was a great surprise. If they yeah. had saved K. Rule for last, we would have all known about him. It would have been very likely we would have known about it, yeah. Um, it's possible. I mean, they still got Piranha Plant through without being leaked. That is true. Uh... <laughs> Which that that that's that's a whole thing to discuss. Uh, yeah, later. I think we're gonna have a, um, a separate talk about piranha plant specifically. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, there were a lot of people who were like, "There's a fair amount of people who were like actually upset about it," and I'm just like, "Look at everything we got." I, I remember I saw it, there were people saying that like Sakurai is just like putting what he wants to see in the game. He doesn't care about his fans and stuff like that. And I was just like, he gave us Ridley uh, and K. Yeah, Rule. You know, just, we got, we got Isabel, which is language. Like, just fuck that. Fuck that shit. I know that Sakurai's I, done so much fan service for this fucking Yeah, play. this this is possibly... Th this this roster is possibly the most fan service roster. Oh, by done. far. Like, like the, the people being put in, picks, he's they, were, they were almost requests. all entirely... They were all... I mean, a lot of them were big requests. Ridley was a huge request. Cave Rule was a huge request. Uh, Castlevania content was a huge request. Isabel's a super popular Nintendo character. Uh, Splatoon content was a huge request. This is by far the most fan servicey amount he has done. Bringing back every single veteran. Bringing back as many stages as possible. The gigantic selection of music. So many characters having individualized victory themes. There's so much here that was all fan requested. It is so unfair to call any of this just Sakurai picks. Yeah. I I'm I'm very happy with what we're getting. And I if this doesn't do it for somebody like that's that's fine, but it's just bizarre to me how uh, toxic people have been over it. I'm just like Yeah. I mean, god, you know if 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 you're really bothered by it, just sheer, don't buy it and shut up. The sheer <laughs> amount of content in this as well. Just the amount that seems to be going into spirits. When you look at all the extra representation that's in spirits. Uh, in the world of light, which we got like you know confirmation. Uh, they they showed off spirits mode, which kind of sucked because I wanted to do a direct with you where we'd like speculate about uh, or not a direct. I wanted to do a smash talk with you where we'd speculate about uh, what spirits were. Um, yeah. But then the direct ended up being like two weeks earlier than I thought it would be. Um, well, the other thing too, and maybe I could talk about this a little bit. I already did a video on spirits a few months ago. Right. So it was kind of hard for me to talk about spirit speculation when I kind of already had an idea of what elements might be in it. Although the mode itself um, is very different from what I, what, you know, I had no clue what the mode itself was going to be like. I just knew some elements of it. Yeah, you knew some, and that, that was the main thing was, I, I wanted to speculate on like, what could the story thing possibly be? Uh, right. Because it, it seems it like there'd be a story like, to it. And it seems like the story thing is separate, right? Because like, Spirits mode to me is that kind of event match styled mode where you're fighting characters representing other characters, whereas World of Light is the true, like, story mode. From what I understand, those spirit matches are how you progress through World of Light. Okay, so are they the same thing or are they two separate things? So, World of Light is, like, the, the, the story mode and all that, but then there's a whole bunch of other things you do with the spirits in terms of, like, feeding them and sending them out on, like, expeditions, it looked like. Um, right. And it, it seems like they'll also kind of function like trophies did. It looks like... Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the descriptions and everything that we'd get used... that we used to see on trophies will be on these spirits now. Oh, I'm sure. Um, which a lot of people are upset that trophies are gone. I'm like, they're not gone, they're just called spirits now. Yeah, um, I mean, I guess the thing is people like the 3D models, but my god, I mean, every game was adding more and more of those things, and, like, yeah. it was a lot. So, I understand, like, with the amount of content, like, having to then do more renders of things that are already in the game and already have renders for Spirits mode. Uh, I, I understand why that was, like, a worthwhile thing to cut. If it means they can get other content in there, like... that's the, Well, that's the other thing, too. Just in general, a lot of the complaints I've seen about Ultimate have been about cut th things and ultimately i like almost every cut thing i've seen is something that's like not a big enough deal for me to miss in the face of the other things we're getting yeah like i i would i would rather have this gigantic spirits mode over trophies yeah exactly um, but 
I don't know. It's also, like, just all the other details that are coming out, like, there's just so much in terms of, uh, like, the classic mode looks phenomenal. Like, each character is going to have, like, their own classic mode, which is... Each character has their own individualized classic mode. That's so cool. Yeah. Like, there's a... Because that's, that's one thing that a lot of people are saying, is it's like, oh, we have no reason to play everybody's classic mode now that there's no trophies for it. And it's like, well, no, now you do. Uh, yeah. It, each one is actually its own thing, uh, which is phenomenal, considering the roster is, like... 72? 74? How big is it? Does it depend on how you uh, count Pokemon Trainer? Well, yeah, it depends on how you count Pokemon Trainer and if you count Echoes or not, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, which it's, I assume Echoes will also have they count it. They count it as 74. Okay. I, I assume that Echoes will also have their own classic mode. That's, uh, for my understanding. Yeah. Um, if that's not the case, it's not a huge deal. Uh, that, right. that's, that's not many less. Um, yeah, just the, the sheer amount of stuff that's being put in this is phenomenal. Um, right. and we actually did live, if you wanted to see, like, more kind of, like, live reactions and everything, we did live stream it. Uh, you can find his solo live stream on his channel, and then one with both of us on my channel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's get down to the characters, though. Um, okay. Because I think that's the thing that everybody cares about the most. Oh, um, be a good point. Because when it, when it comes to everything else, it's like, I just like everything they're putting in it. The music, the stages, all the different modes. It's all, like, really cool stuff that I'm really glad is going to be there. Before um, we get off of modes, just because I was talking about cut content, you know, the, the big thing is people were upset because uh, they cut out stadium events, right? There's no target test or home run contest at all. Yeah. Um, and additionally, there's no stage builder mode. Uh, those are the big things that got cut. The thing is, the stadium events, to me, to me, the stadium events were fun little mini games that were better when the roster was smaller. Because with the, the amount of characters we have now, doing all those stadium events with everybody was starting to get pretty tedious. And like having the individualized classic modes. Uh, not to mention spirits mode and story mode, I think is just better in every regard. Yeah. Uh, stage builder, I'm going to miss a little bit. Uh, I thought, you know, I spent a lot more time on Brawl's stage maker than Four's stage maker. I forgot Four had I, a stage maker. <laughs> see, and I guess that was a common thing, I guess. I guess a lot more people remember Brawl stage maker a lot more fondly. I know I made a lot more stages back in Brawl. But, you know... On one hand, yeah, I might miss that mode. On the other hand, I didn't use it much in Smash 4, and also there's already, like, over a hundred stages, so I'm not sure what I would make. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the, the stuff that got cut is stuff that was kind of the less popular stuff in the game. So I'm not, like... It, 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 yeah, it's things like where when I think about it, it's like, I didn't I didn't spend a lot of time doing any of that stuff. I, I, I spent a lot of time doing, like, uh, uh, Break the Targets on, in, like, 64. Right. See, um, the, my fondest memories of Break the Targets is in 64. Um, yeah. But yeah. as it's... But as it's, it's Home Run Contest? I had fun with Home Run Contest in Melee, kind of. Yeah. It was fine. Um, and I usually only ever did it because, like, I was trying to get rewards or whatever. Exactly. Um, I was just trying to get... Oh, it's like, oh, I got to get the sandbag trophy, so I jump over sandbag with Yoshi, rapidly uses down aerial, and then hit him with the bat really hard. Yeah, And you just which, show off, hey, look, I got 4,000 feet with Yoshi or something. But if there had been no reward... Uh, I wouldn't I probably, have cared. I, I probably wouldn't have touched <laughs> it. Yeah, like... Yeah. Why, so, why, I would I have spent, why would I have spent a bunch of time just, like, hitting this bag over and over again if there wasn't, like, a purpose Except to it? The, thi the things that people so, are complaining about are missing are things that just, like, I, I didn't care about much in the first place. Like, oh, this is kind of a fun little extra thing that I'll do if I have ten minutes and I'm really bored. Yeah, and, like, the only <laughs> thing I can remember, like, people never really talked about uh, home run contest and break the targets and stuff. The, the most I would see is I would see, like funny memes or short videos or whatever uh, in the in the home run contest just where like something stupid would happen with a sandbag um, that, that that's, <laughs> that's like true. the most I would remember from those modes it wasn't really something that like it wasn't a high value thing where it's like people spent dozens of hours 
you know, playing I, playing these modes. I did see a lot of people say that, you know, they, they were hoping that if they brought back target test, that each character would have an individualized target test. And that would have been cool, but I think each character having an individualized classic mode more than makes up for that. That's way more substantial, yeah. I, yeah, I completely agree. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. With so that characters. tangent done, uh, characters. Yeah. Um, right. so yeah, so we initially, we got basically the final two characters that, uh, that the Virgamen leaks had confirmed, yep. which was Incineroar and Ken. Um, mm -hmm. definitely some of the lowest impact newcomers on the roster, but I'm also not sure how much of that is because they came at the end of all the speculation and, uh, and, and after the leaks and everything. I, I do wonder if we had seen Ken, like, in the first direct or something, if it would have felt different. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Because, because Ken was something that we all just kind of assumed was going to happen, uh, by that point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, once we knew we could get third-party echoes, it was just kind of like, oh yeah, we can get Ken. That would make sense. He was he was the echo that made the absolute most sense. And that's the thing, and I'm glad he's there. I'm glad he has a couple differences uh, from Ryu in ways that make sense. It ju it just seems like putting Street Fighter into Smash, which is what was cool about Ryu in the first place. And then Incineroar, who, um, there were a lot of people, one thing I've heard that's very common is a lot of people were like, oh, I don't like Incineroar, or I wasn't, I wasn't excited for him at all, but his moveset looks really fun. And that's what most people have said about Incineroar, as far as, far as speculation goes, this whole time. I mean, it's always, you know, God, it's always hard having Pokemon discussions in, ter in terms of Smash Brothers, because there's literally hundreds of good characters and how do you narrow it down to which one should be in Smash Brothers? And you can never can never please everybody with it. All you can do is make a choice, and there's lots of good choices. So just pick one, give it a good move set, which is also super easy because Pokemon are made of move set, uh, and 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 then go with it and make it really good. That's all you can do. They took Incineroar, who was a reasonable choice for a Pokemon, gave him a really good move set, and there he is. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people who were like down on him are now like, ah, oh, yeah, he lo he looks really fun. The the him right. mugging the uh mugging to the crowd is uh really cool. And I honestly think that's why Sakurai went with Incineroar over like Decidueye or anybody else is I think it was because we didn't have that kind of uh of character yet. You know, we didn't Maybe. have a grappler, we didn't have like a wrestler like showman, and so they could do like a lot of fun things that didn't exist in the game yet. Um and so I think that's why they went with Incineroar is to have like that kind. I think it's less about him as a Pokemon and more about him as like uh, his place in a fighting game. Yeah, that makes sense. And you know, I'm always down for more fighting game character archetypes because I'm a real big fighting game guy. So wh where's our where's our samurai? We need a samurai character. <sighs> <laughs> Samurott comes next. <laughs> Samurott. <laughs> um, but yeah. Then, so after we got our, like, our final roster, and uh, then there was a lot of like stuff about menu options and uh, a, a lot oh, of other junk. That was the most exciting part. <laughs> a, lo a lot of people, a lot of people were really like, a lot of people were like getting really bored with it and like, really, is this all you have to show Nintendo? Then, 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 then Sakurai surprised everybody and uh, revealed that uh, the first kind of DLC character, but not quite DLC character. Uh, was going to be Piranha Plant. <laughs> and, uh, that... That, that surprised everybody. I don't think there was a, oh, I don't yeah. think there was a single person in the country who expected Piranha Plant. But see, that's the great thing. After, you know, we got used to Sakurai adding a surprise character in every Smash game, right? I mean, that's just a thing. Oh, Melee has Mr. Game & Watch, and Brawl has Rob, and... Smash 4 is Wii Fit Trainer. And so it's like, what can Sakurai possibly add that still surprises us? Well, here's the thing. Uh, we have so many online speculators now that pretty much every obscure Nintendo character under the sun has been suggested as uh, the surprise character. And because of that, there was nothing that was truly surprising they could pick. 
So somehow they still found a character that was truly surprising. <laughs> that not only did they go with what you could definitely say is like just a random generic enemy character, but of all things, Piranha Plant, who has never ever been playable before. I think my favorite thing about it is that uh, when he was asked about it, Sakurai was just like, I don't think there's a single person who doesn't know who Piranha Plant is. It's it's true. And it's just like, yeah. No, that, that is, is definitely the case. It is one of the most recurring Mario characters of all time. And what's absolutely ridiculous about it is that he also made the character look really, really good. Yes. Here's the thing. Man, the moveset that they gave Piranha Plant is so like all encompassing as far as i can tell and this is just kind of my own kind of you know analysis on it and I, i'm sure other people have found these things too it looks like it's four special moves are a poison attack which in which it specifically changes its coloration to that of the poisonous piranha plants from paper mario specifically like when it uses its poison so that's a paper mario reference attack and then it has a special move where it flies by spinning its leaves. And that's just like the jumping piranha plants from Super Mario World. That's the only game where they do that. And it, there it is being represented in its Smash Brothers moveset. And then it also has an attack where it spits spiky balls. And that's directly referenced uh, the Tooies, which are a piranha plant spinoff that's only in Super Mario Brothers 3. And not only that, it, it runs on two legs, which is also the same legs it has in Super Mario Bros. 3 in that subspecies of piranha plant. So they've taken like all the special piranha plants from all the Mario games and encompassed them in this one character. It's really, really good. They've created a moveset that is incredibly unique and varied and could only exist for this type of character. Like, it's... It's possibly the most impressive newcomer, just for that fact alone. <laughs> like, yeah, because like K. Rool's moveset is awesome and references like so much of the series, but it's also a lot of stuff that we had thought of before. Oh yeah, because, um, I mean, but Piranha everyone's Plant. Everyone's talked about like what K. Rool's moveset would be, and his moveset is pretty much what everyone talked about it would be. <laughs> but Piranha Plant, man, like, I, I, it's not even something that any of us have even thought about. But it no. looks it looks fantastic. It looks like it's gonna right. be like an actual pe competitive. If Piranha Plant is, it, if if actual fighting game tournaments are won by Piranha Plant, <laughs> like that's just phenomenal. And so obviously this was like a really divisive sort of thing. There were a lot of people who got really upset about it. Uh, particularly the Waluigi fans got really upset about it. Um, oh, so did Gino fans. Ah, I mean I'm probably one of the biggest Gino fans there is, and whatever yeah no i mean i have i have a different friend though who's got so, so pissed about it i'm like really but whatever nobody's taking slots from anybody else oh god yeah yeah that's such a such a it's just not an accurate mindset so yeah a lot of people are really upset about it um some people a lot of people like absolutely love it i know on my discord everybody is like completely on the piranha plant bandwagon <laughs> that's great um, which has been really fun to see yeah like pretty much everybody's planning on maining him and it yeah it's oh it's that's fantastic. super fun um but you know like a lot of discussion has come around now is especially with especially now that we know that we have five more dlc characters coming uh it's just like now that piranha plan is in the game who isn't on the table at this point <laughs> yeah um so that's one it's of the so things funny, it's so funny every about. time that gets brought up right because it was like oh they added snake wow anyone can make it in and then people make up their rules oh we fit trainers in we can have anybody oh uh ridley's in k rules in like every time there's a, a big unexpected character then it's like whoa there really are no limitations and then like we keep having that re-conversation right despite the fact that we got piranha plant in there are still people who are like they can't add bandana waddle d having a generic enemy was a one-time deal i'm like seriously you just screw off well we still have i encountered like the argument earlier today that was saying that like resident evil can't have a character because it's a horror game franchise and you can't have realistic guns it doesn't fit into smash oh no 
Oh, and I was just like, but no. we have Snake and we have Bayonetta, and they now have Fatal Frame represented. So like, they're clearly okay with horror games and with. And I don't know. I think setting rules on like this can't be in unless Sakurai explicitly states it is just always asking to oh, be embarrassed. Oh, like, it is a losing battle. I just for fun, just for fun, because we were talking about this earlier today, I posted some old comments on my Twitter today about, like, Ridley and Snake being stupid desires of mine. <laughs> whenever whenever you just get absolute about this thing can't happen, you're just asking to be proven wrong. Oh, um, you were asking for it. Especially, like, after Piranha Plant, like, it really is a thing where it's just like, I'm, I think it can be literally anything at this point. Although I do think that there is a different criteria for DLC. Not really criteria, not like a yeah. thing where it's like, this can't happen, but more like DLC characters have a different kind of shoe to fill um, because you're asking for the player to pay more money. They, ha they, they they carry like a different weight with them. There's, there's like a, it feels like with DLC characters that we've gotten so far, um, like with four, like there's been a different mindset behind it. Like for example, um, I don't think that like villager would have ever been considered for dlc really i don't think that's something that they'd want to put in dlc i think that when it comes to big new nintendo franchises like that to to have a character that represents an entire franchise especially one that like isn't new but has been established for a long time i think putting him behind a paywall would rub a lot of people the wrong way that sort of thing. Supplementary characters to an already existing series, I think, are perfectly fine. But okay. like, if 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 Little Mac or Villager, or debatably Wii Fit Trainer, uh, something like that, was put behind a paywall, it would rub some people the wrong way, and I think it would feel kind of weird, because then it would feel like, well, this is your, like, this is your franchise. Why isn't this in the base game? Uh, sort of thing. But I think that like new third parties are totally on board. I, th I think oh, yeah. I think and new third different. parties is something that's totally cool, and is something that they I am kind of expecting to happen at some point in this next in this DLC pass. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much positive of that. Like we'll have at least one new third party franchise. Um, what's interesting though is uh, like an hour before we started recording this, uh, Sakurai actually tweeted some stuff about this. Um, yes, um, a lot of it was stuff that I already kind of assumed, but it was it was good to see it a little more defined. Yeah, um, what he said basically was that the DLC plans are finalized. Um, and I kind of assumed that. I assumed already that, like, I thought that was already really well implied with how they said, oh, Rex didn't quite make the cut because we've already planned these DLC characters. I, I, I'm pretty sure the five DLC characters that they're coming out with were, like, planned a long time ago before they could have even although this Rex. the second part of that tweet makes me wonder though yeah um, maybe because um because then what he says is that uh these characters were picked by nintendo and then he looked and saw like if he could make good characters out of them and then put together a plan from there mm. um so that makes me wonder like is this something that like nintendo like looked at the game that he had and they were, and like during development they were like okay we want you to get this, and 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 like, what does he mean by Nintendo? Is he talking about the the like board of like like because depending on who that comes from, like those are very different mindsets. If you're talking oh, yeah. about if you're talking about like the the board of investors is like requesting this, then they're going to be going for like we want nothing but like big franchises that will bring new people to buying the game and will result in like more revenue for us. Um, but if you're talking about like, um more of like their actual like development teams and like the people who are on the more creative side of it then they're going to be approaching it from a different mindset um and they're probably going to be like more likely to recommend uh nintendo characters or something along those lines um yeah so i'm, I'm really curious if he's gonna say any more about that uh right but mostly i i, I don't know i just think it's interesting that it's something that he possibly didn't entirely pick himself. So that said, what what do you think we're going to see uh, for DLC in the future? Now that we've had a couple more Assist Trophy deconfirmations and stuff like that. Oh, also, do you think stickers are a deconfirmation? Oh, boy. Oh, man. So let's go through both those questions. Do I think stickers or spirits 
or a deconfirmation. Oh, spirits, right. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Here's the thing. I mean, we, you know, kind of like when we're talking about any time that Sakurai adds a character, I, the bottom line is we just don't know. We've never been given an outright D confirmation like, no, spirits can't become playable characters. What is true, if you want to use examples of the past, is that in Smash 4, uh, Mewtwo and Lucas were trophies before they became DLC characters. So there's that. Um... If for what that's worth, some people say it doesn't count because they're veterans, but, like, I mean, it's the closest example we're going to get. We've still never been told outright that, like, assist trophies can't become DLC characters. We've never seen it happen, but we've never been outright told it can't happen. I would assume it's not going to happen because if these five DLC characters have been pre-planned, you would think that means that they wouldn't have picked them to also be assist trophies. On the other hand, Robin still summons Krom in his final smash, despite the fact that Krom is a playable character. So I just don't think things like that really even matter. Tingle still got a chance, baby. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, did you know Tingle's assist trophy isn't back? Tingle still got a chance, baby. <laughs> That's one of the only options I have left. I gotta ride that train. Right, because, um, yeah, Skull, Skull Kid is a confirmed returning assist trophy. I personally, I was never huge on board with Skull Kid anyways. Yeah. I'd, I'd I, like him, I but, like, he was never one of my top Zelda choices. Yeah, I don't personally think that spirits are a deconfirmation. Um, right. For a couple reasons. Uh, the biggest one being that there are so many spirits that seem to yeah. represent absolutely everybody who isn't in the game yet that, like, if none of them could actually be playable, then our DLC would have to be almost entirely just third-party characters from unrepresented franchises so far. Right. Um, because they have really... F like, the spirits just seem so expansive. They have, like... Everything, it feels like everything down to just, like, the most minute common enemy in every franchise. Like People are, though, picking out, like, which major speculated characters have not been seen as spirits. Yeah, but with how many spirits there are, I feel like we just won't know until we actually have the game in our hands. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think spirits are a deconfirmation. Um, I think assist trophies are still the only ones that I still feel like, yeah... And that's just because with assist trophies, especially now that they walk around on the field and can be, like, knocked out and stuff, uh, I, I just kind of feel like that's the point where it would be too confusing to have uh, both a playable character and an assist trophy walking around. Okay. Um, but, like, when it comes to, like, stage elements and stuff like that, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Um, I, think the, I think the only big thing is, like, yeah, if they're not going to be an actual physical moving around... Uh, fighter on the field basically then i don't think it's too confusing to possibly work around to have a character that people want to see you know okay. um that's that's where i'm sitting right now uh that said let's get into who we think the characters could be okay we know it's probably not isaac at this point yeah, he's an assist uh, trophy. He's a really good-looking assist trophy. Yeah, they really expanded him, which is another reason why I also think that he's probably not going to be playable. <laughs> oh, Like, they, yeah. they, they really fleshed out his assist trophy to be more like an actual fighter. Uh, so, I, I think I think that's where he's going to stay. Probably. Shadow's assist trophy's there. It is. Although, I don't know how I'd feel about Echo DLC anyways. I mean, they've already, they flat out said there's not going to be Echo DLC. They, they did? They said they're all going to be, yep, they said they're all completely not Echoes. They've already said Excellent. that. Cool. So, okay, so who else was highly speculated and requested that we didn't see yet? Uh, Bandana Waddle D. Bandana Waddle D is an option. Uh, Alright, here's the characters, here's the characters that have bounced around a lot. I mean, of course Gino. Of course, uh, Bandana Waddle D. <laughs> um, people have noticed that among all the spirits we've seen, there has been little to no 
Xenoblade Chronicle X stuff. Even though we were showing off the music, it was all Xenoblade and then Xenoblade 2 music. I just so don't know like, what that means. Cause it's so like, people are like, okay, is Xenoblade Chronicles X going to be its own thing? And they're going to bring in a newcomer from that? And, you know? I just can't figure out if it's because Sakurai wants to do something with it or that Sakurai doesn't consider it important or crucial to the series like the like the mainline games are. I don't know. Like I, I just I don't mean, know because we haven't heard him say it's anything hard, about it in it's any hard, capacity. It's hard to speak neutrally because I was such a huge fan of Xenoblade Chronicles X and so my immediate mind is like, you know, of course they want to represent it. It was a fantastic game. But like, I don't know how, you know, Nintendo as a whole felt about it. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's 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 really it's really hard to say. Um, I mean, because you know, it definitely didn't carry as much weight as Xenoblade Two did, or the original. No, game. but like, like, I mean, the big problem, of course. I mean, it's 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 going to be hard to sell. Um, it's going to be hard to sell on a wide scale a young new JRPG franchise to the West as it is. It's going to be especially hard when your console of choice is the Wii U. Yes. But still, it's a, yeah, it's just that thing of, like, I just don't know what they think about it. I mean, I guess I guess they like Elma enough to bring her back in Torna, but, like... Sure, but that's, like, the people who actually make the the games. Exactly. And, 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 they've, and they brought back, like, so something like, from every Xeno game. Yeah, so it's, it's just, it's hard to gauge. I'm hopeful... I'm not def I'm not banking on it. I'm not like, oh yeah, all of this totally hints towards Elma being a DLC character. I am hopeful of that being a possibility given that we haven't seen those references, especially because I would love to see those references. I mean, if they weren't going to make Elma a playable character, I would have loved to have seen her as an assist trophy, you know? I mean, I would have loved to see Duster as an assist trophy too. That didn't happen. <laughs> it's so weird to me that Duster's just like left out. He's just gone. I'm so sad. Maybe he's going to be DLC. <laughs> I just... I feel like he's one of the more... He is my favorite character of the whole Mother series. And he's the only one not being majorly represented. And I think it's not just you. I think that Duster is genuinely one of the more popular characters. And I think that he is liked more than Kumatora and Boney. Yeah? Like, I, 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 I don't know. Feel... Kumatora is pretty popular. But nobody likes Boney. I mean, everybody likes Boney. But, like, nobody like Boney, Boney you, you know, you like Boney as much as you like any dog. He's just a dog. Which, yeah. for some people, is a lot. So. Granted, he's a dog that, like, dresses up as a person for a while. <laughs> that is a really fun part of the game. It is. Oh, man. If you haven't watched my playthrough of Mother 3, go watch my playthrough of Mother 3. It was, it was delightful. I enjoy that game very much. Oh, yeah. I can't remember how we got on this tangent. We were talking about DLC characters. Right, yes. The whole point of this video. When you're talking if you're talking just purely about Nintendo characters. Um yeah, like Nintendo I, said, for now. I, the, I feel like the big ones that have been thrown around are Bandana Waddle D and Elma. And then to a lesser extent, the other ones I still see get brought up are Dixie Kong. If Dixie's gonna be an option, she would have to be a fully unique character then. Which is totally fine. She's yeah, always which is which is what I that. wanted from Dixie in the first place. Um, it's just I know a lot of people kind of banked on her being an Echo or at least a semi clone. Which you know they haven't ruled that out. I mean, Isabel counts as a unique character. I, I guess Dixie is possible, but I feel like they would go for something more kind of standalone and unique at this point. What if yeah. all five of them really are just like third party, like standalone franchises? I I wouldn't be surprised. Like if it's all just partnership deals, and like that's that's why Nintendo like specifically gave them a list. It's just like, hey, go get like, go get the rights to these franchises. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other Nintendo thing I still see, um, and it's interesting because it goes back to what you were talking about. You know, putting a new franchise behind a paywall is you getting back to that. If they add something from Rhythm Heaven. That's true. We still haven't seen, uh... Did we see an assist from Rhythm Heaven yet? No assist, 
Although Joe and Chorus Kids have both been seen as spirits. Okay. Well, I don't think that would take them off the table as playable, but some people are saying that they think, like, maybe uh, primary spirits will be unplayable, but, like, non-primary spirits will still be on the table. I don't, oh know, if, I don't know enough about the semantics of spirits, and I don't know if I care to get that deep into it yeah, at this I moment in time. Because um, that would be interesting, because then, like, yeah, I don't know, because then, like, your primary spirit, it's like, I'm playing as Dixie, possessed by the spirit of Dixie. The spirit fight for Dixie is definitely going to be just, like, Diddy Kong in a pink alternate costume, isn't it? Oh, probably. What about Cranky? <laughs> what about Cranky? I will, be, I will be not super, but I would be slightly upset if they added Cranky before Dixie. Not super upset, because, like, okay. But... Honestly, I wanted Cranky more than K. Rule. <laughs> I want, I want like, a pogo character who throws his teeth at people. Of course. Are you doesn't? kidding me? That would have been awesome. <laughs> um, what do you think about stuff like... So people, there were some people who were still, like, pulling for Wonderful 101 getting a rep. Oh, well, I guess that's still a possibility. We have not seen any Wonderful 101 stickers from what I've heard. I think ARMS is pretty much put away just because I think if we did get somebody, it would be Springman. I'm pretty sure ARMS is in the same boat as Rex. They were like, no, we didn't have time to consider this, so it's not going to happen yet. Although I do wonder I've, about I've the timing pretty much of the DLC. Accepted that. What's that? I do wonder about the timing of the DLC, though. Like, w was Some the DLC people... something they decided from the very beginning, or was this during development? that like My, my guess is that they planned the DLC long ago. That That's my guess. It's that just how said, long ago? Like, was it planned there... at the same time as the base roster? Maybe. Or maybe soon after. Um, that said, there are ARMS fans who are pulling for a different ARMS character. Like, they're going, okay, Springman's an assist and Ribbon Girl's, uh, you know, a Mii Fighter costume and stuff. But maybe they'll add, like, instead of adding the poster child Springman, maybe they'll just add the most popular ARMS character as the playable one. Twintel. No, it'd actually be Min Min. Bark and Bite. <laughs> That's your favorite. Bark and, and Bite favorite are Spring the best Man, characters in the so. game. I, I do like Bark and Bite a lot. They're my second favorites. He's got a dog. But I guess Min Min is the fan favorite. So <sighs> It's because Nintendo fans are weeaboos. <laughs> it's a ramen girl. Well, the only way this could get any better is if she, her hair was pocky. Oh man! That was okay, her hair's already ramen. I have to say, like her legs are pocky. I don't know. It doesn't matter. No, you're right. I totally forgot about Wonderful One on One. Maybe that's still a it's, thing. It's. It's. I mean, we haven't seen anything from it, have we? No. I. It's weird that it's not even addressed. Like, even as like, maybe it's just a spirit we haven't seen yet. But like, well, how would you compare Wonderful One on One to Xenoblade Chronicles X? I feel like Wonderful One on One made a bigger splash than X did. I don't, I don't really know. It's got, like, a fairly passionate, like, fan base. Okay. And there's, like, precedence for Platinum, like, kind of getting a, a nod because of Bayonetta. Okay. So, I, it, it's weird that it wouldn't be acknowledged at all, because it was one of, it's, it's a new Nintendo IP, you know? I think. It, does it count as a Nintendo IP, or is it a Platinum Games IP? Uh, Platinum doesn't it's, like own their stuff, right? Right. The ownership, from my understanding, because I've looked a lot of this stuff up, but from my understanding, the ownership for Wonderful 101 does fall under Nintendo. Yeah, so it's a new Nintendo IP, so it's weird that it wouldn't get at least some kind of nod. You know, you look at, like, it's it's older than ARMS is by a couple of years, and, you know, ARMS got costume, it got a, 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 an assist trophy, I'm pretty sure it'll get some spirits as well. Like, you know, I actually, I would, like just because, like, stylistically, I think it would fit so well, I would love, like, a Wonder Red me costume. Yeah. For, because for a just me brawler? Pro pro Proportionate-wise, it would work really well. Yeah, You know, absolutely. there's so many me costumes that are like, okay, well, it's the midget version of this character. <laughs> you know what I mean? I also would love a wonderful 101 assist trophy where it's just, like, you just see a bunch of, like, tiny specks. And then they grow into, like, a giant sword or something and start, like, swinging at you. <laughs> and they, like, break apart and turn into a fist. And the fist just starts flying at you. I would love that. 
like like part of me doesn't want wonder red or blue to be playable just because i would love to have an assist trophy where it's just like a bunch of really tiny things that you can barely see that then become like a giant sword that just comes flying at you i see like i, w I would love that concept but it looks like it's not happening it's weird yeah it, it's with these games that don't even get a nod like like uh chronicles x and uh and wonderful 101 it's like what do fatal frames in here why aren't these things? Yeah, I, you know, um, I was happy about that too. That they got fatal frame stuff. Yeah, so I just like I, I I don't know like I don't know I don't know what's going on. I don't know what he's thinking about it. I don't know if he's thinking about it. It seems weird that it would just slip by with like how in depth this game is going to like representing what feels like all of Nintendo. Like they're they're trying to fit absolutely everything in at least through spirits, if nothing else. So it's just like it's it's weird for something that recent and that new to just not exist i see um so i don't know maybe that's something they've got planned maybe uh, i didn't even consider it maybe a lot of it probably also depends on if they've got a, a sequel in the works because if it's nintendo like asking for things they very well might have asked for a promotional wonderful 101 character if the wonderful 102 is coming out soon you know maybe so i who's to say it's it's so up in the air <laughs> why are we yeah. speculating what well, because uh, i like it uh, that's fair i guess a, a pokemon is on the table oh boy a lot of people would be pissed about that a lot of people are saying that like an eighth gen pokemon makes sense it no no if they didn't have time to consider rex or arms characters there's no way they would have been like let's add a gen 8 pokemon there's no way you think no pokemon Oh, I, I really doubt it. I don't know. So, see, so, the only new Pokemon we've gotten is Incineroar this time, yeah? That's fine. That the only said, Pokemon, we got last Pokemon time is still Ninja. a very large series in, in the roster right now. There are still a lot of Pokemon in this game already. So, it's not oh, a huge yeah. deal if we don't get more. No, I mean, yeah, if you include Pokemon Trainer, we have like 10? What do you think about, like, a retro rep? What do you think about Because, like, Excite Biker and Mock Rider were thrown around a lot, and a lot of people are expecting one of them to show up this time. Um, a lot of a lot of people were expecting to be surprised by them this time. Um, uh, so I think Piranha Plant counts as our surprise character from that standpoint. Now, as far as just a pure retro rep goes, which we didn't really see, um, I would be I would be surprised if they saved that kind of character for DLC. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean it, it falls in line with that thing I was saying earlier, where it's like to have like a standalone rep of something. That is Nintendo yeah. not being the base roster just feels weird. Yeah, especially unless it's like a just, new if, thing that just came out, you know. Especially if it's a, 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 a retro rep, that seems very strange to me. Yeah, something where it's like this is like part of Nintendo's like core identity. Now in this game, like all about celebrating uh, Nintendo and its heart, let's not include it in the base game and make you pay more for it. Yeah, it, it just it, it feels a bit weird. Um. Is there, any, is, is there anything else to even think about other than, like, third parties? Uh, there were a oh, lot of third, third parties. parties that were heavily speculated this time, and uh, a lot of people expected them. Yeah. Um, and because of just, just the nature of DLC, because so many of them are standalone reps of their franchises, I think a lot of them really are prime DLC candidates. For um, sure. So what some, someone was explaining to me that it's actually way easier... Um, to make new third-party characters um, DLC because you have less you have to go through when you're trying to, like, promote the game as a whole. So it's actually... It's a lot easier to add third-party characters as DLC than in base game. Right, because then they just become, like, their own isolated... Uh, um, they become their own, like, isolated uh, marketing campaigns, basically. Right. And they do a lot of their own lifting. Um... First off, Dante from the Devil May Cry series. <laughs> Is it just a meme or does he have a chance? Oh god. Um I <laughs> I can't it's hard for me to believe that they would pick Dante, a character whose series has never featured on Nintendo, as 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 a third party character choice. Yeah, I don't uh I don't I, I, I don't disagree there. I'm not gonna write it off as an impossibility, but I would be kind of uh, about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not expecting it. It's just a meme. Um but 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not expecting Dante, but as far as Devil May Cry, or as far as Capcom goes, uh, I have seen some people still saying that we might get a Monster Hunter DLC character. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm just not feeling it. I, it I'm feels so, either. it would feel so weird to have, like, a Rathalos in the base game, and then, like, the Hunter doesn't come till DLC. Yeah, that's the, that sounds kind of weird for me, for one, and then also if it's like, these are the five DLC characters you're getting. I don't know. Monster Hunter sounds a little weird to me. Third party generic avatar. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was, I was, we were talking about this in the Discord earlier, and I, I was saying, like, I feel like Villager happened because he is a Nintendo franchise, and they were, like, 40-something characters deep on Nintendo franchises. So, like, they could afford to do that. And, yeah, Monster Hunter was a playable character in Marvel vs. Capcom, but that's because it was representing the entirety of Capcom. Like, right. if Marvel vs. Capcom had, like, three Capcom characters in it, Monster Hunter wouldn't have been there. Like, not not even close. And it, it's not it's not because the series isn't popular. The series has been getting a lot of popularity, and, I, and I'm, like, a huge fan of it. But, like, he, the, the Hunter that you create is not, like, a huge iconic character that stands up there with, like, all these other icons. Um... Let alone, even just the icons that Capcom has, they have so many huge series that have, like, history going back to, like, the beginning of, of like, uh, of home consoles. I just don't see him getting in over any of the actual characters. I honestly think somebody like Phoenix Wright would be more likely than a Monster Hunter. I do, too. But also, just in general, too, and I don't know how much that Nintendo or Sakurai cares about this type of thing, but at this point now... Just with Capcom, Capcom has Mega Man, Ryu, and Ken in Smash Brothers. Man, if they got another yeah. character through the DLC, boy, that's some that's some real heavy Capcom love there. Capcom also has so many of those franchises. That's the it, thing. It is does. Like, uh, I mean, that's that's you know, yeah, that's that's the flip side. Is Capcom has so much. Because, I mean, we can talk about Monster Hunter, and I'll agree that Monster Hunter is a big Capcom series heavily tied to Nintendo. And then that's not even mentioning Phoenix Wright and Resident Evil, which are also huge franchises with plenty of Nintendo's ties. I think so, Capcom... Like, God, there's so much. I think Capcom, when you compare it to, like, Namco, or when you compare it to uh, Konami, Pretty even, much anyone. Like, like, Capcom has, like, more iconic franchises than almost any other developer out there. Pretty it's, much, yeah. It's that's, unreal. That is that is yeah. what you can say about Capcom. That yeah, is absolutely like, true. They have so much. They just have so much. And so, yeah, even if, they were, if there are more Capcom third parties, I, I look at it less as, like, which company are they representing and more, like, when you when you look at, like, iconic franchises the out there, Capcom just has a larger share of it, so it kind of makes sense that they would uh, be more represented. Because, like, with Konami, like, we've got... Metal Gear Solid, and we've got uh, Castlevania. What else? I guess Silent Hill, but like, eh? They have some other things. I think they technically have Bomberman now. But like for Konami, I mean, obviously the next big one would be Bomberman, which leads me to believe they're not going to add any more from Konami because they wouldn't have made Bomberman an assist trophy in that case. Yeah, because then you get into like Yu-Gi-Oh, which, uh, eh. Do they own Dig Dug? I'm no, honestly not sure. Isn't it? Dig that's Dug Namco. might be that's Dig Dug might be Namco. Yeah, Dig Dug's Namco. Yeah. But still, right? I mean, just to me, the obvious big next Konami character would be Bomberman. Since they made Bomberman an assist trophy, I'm not expecting any more from Konami. Sega. Oh, Sega. 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 It kind of um, goes back to like our th when we talked about third parties before. Uh, Sega just doesn't really have anything that would be as impactful as just getting another Sonic character. I'm still down with that. You know, pe some people want to argue to me. It's like, oh, they'll add Arlie from Puyo Puyo, and I'm like, no, that's not an they... iconic character. No, I, I I completely agree. Like, it's like I could see that being up there. They say she's popular in Japan, Sega. and I'm like, but a, a character being like cute. And being, like, big for that reason is not the same thing as, like, this is an icon of gaming. To me, I mean, it's still, like, even if she's up there as far as Sega reps goes, that is still below secondary Sonic character to me. 
And there are, there is a pretty good number of people who believe that with Knuckles and Shadow as assist trophies, maybe they really will add Tails as a DLC character. Uh, and I'm probably also projecting myself onto that because I would really love that. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. He is, uh, he is like the second Sonic character. He is. Tails is like, man, there was so much about Sonic that was like Sonic and Tails, Sonic and Tails. Tails is almost like synonymous with Sonic as far as the series goes. And and he would definitely be unique and he's definitely recognizable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he has a lot going for him. Um, if we see a new Sega rep, that wouldn't surprise me. I really, and this probably isn't going to happen. Uh, I'm, I know it's not going to happen because there's no way they're going to get a playable character. But man, uh-huh. Namco owns Katamari, and Katamari is coming to the Switch. <laughs> I just want some Katamari stuff in Smash. I want the music. Oh, you know? yeah. Well, I just want Phoenix Wright music. That's fair. Oh, man. I, 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 I do desperately want Phoenix Wright to be in Smash. I, it's probably not going to happen, but I desperately want it. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Going back to Sega for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sega owns Atlas. There's been a lot of support for that Shin Megami Tensei character or that Persona character in Smash Brothers. By Shin Megami Tensei character, are you talking about Jack Frost? Well, maybe. I think the character I get to see brought up a lot is actually more just Joker from Persona 5. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is, is like, when you said Shin Megami Tensei, I was like, oh, he's going to talk about Joker. Uh, no, I got, I got mixed up. Be, I guess got mixed up because I don't play those games. Well, never, Persona so. is a spinoff of Shin Megami Tensei. Yes, that I know. That I know. I see Joker a lot. Um... I don't know if I'm, if I'm feeling it, just because, like, it's it's not on Nintendo? So that's yeah, kind of weird well, to me. You could argue that it's like a cloud situation where it's like, oh, well, even if Final Fantasy VII has been on Nintendo, there have been Persona games on Nintendo, or at least Shin Megami Tensei, which is, you know, the main cloud series. had Cloud had appeared on Nintendo systems, though. Yes, that is true. And also, like, Persona 5, from everything I understand, phenomenal game. I really desperately want to get a PS4 so I can play it. Um, like, like, I get that. But it's not the gigantic titan of gaming that Final Fantasy VII was. That, well... It might, be, it, over, it might be over time. Exactly, that's the but thing. Like, it just hasn't had the time. Like, for, yeah, like Final, like, like Final Fantasy VII... VII it, like stands as like one of the most influential games of all time. Yes. So like, cl- like, like that's that's just so much going into Cloud that Joker mm. just doesn't have, and that's he might true. in the future. It's very possible that a decade from now, Persona Five will be like one of those games that everybody goes back to, and Joker will be this highly regarded character. But like, that doesn't exist right now. Okay, Square Enix. Oh, boy. First thing is... This is one of the ones that I think is most likely. Square Enix is already heavily rumored to, like, be getting a character through DLC. That is one of the things I'm most certain of. Here's the thing. Is this is one of the things that people use to say that Vergamen didn't know what he was talking about. Um, <laughs> but especially with what Sakurai has just said about how Nintendo gave him a list for DLC and all that, uh, I think that kind of explains the stuff that Vergamen heard about uh, that didn't end up being in it. Hmm. Um, cause you know, yeah, it could. They, I need they to very well that. could have been negotiating for your Square Enix character and for Minecraft, but as DLC. Could be. If if this is how it was going. Because if, if one of his sources were just in Nintendo's business division and they just overheard that this stuff was happening, like... Yeah, it's, it's completely possible. And not only that, but Square Enix has one rep, and they are a much larger company than that. Yeah. I mean, you know my stance already. The one rep we have is from Final Fantasy, so I would really like to see a rep from Dragon Quest. (laughs) Yeah, something from Dragon Quest and Geno, I think, are both on the table. Some people believe that we could alternatively get a second Final Fantasy character, and maybe Sora could be on the table. 
I'm not feeling Sora, but I think a second Final Fantasy character is possible. Um, okay. I still think the most likely... He kind of sits evenly between Dragon Quest and Geno. Possibly both, just because they they do such wildly different things. And I will say, not, not my bias anymore for once. Not my bias anymore. The names I'm getting seen thrown around a lot are Geno or Dragon Quest character. It's so funny. It used to be, I used to remember being on these forums and being like the only one talking about Dragon Quest characters. And now like I'm seeing it brought up. Like, boy, if they're going to add another second saying Square Enix character, it could be Gino or a Dragon Quest character, and I'm like, yes! I mean, now that we got Castlevania, like, there were very few, like, classic, like, industry-defining series that aren't represented, and Dragon Quest is one of those. Dragon Quest is easily one of those. Yeah. There are very few of those left, and, uh, Dragon Quest is the chance to get one. That's, you know, and that's one of the big reasons I really hope for Dragon Quest is because I feel like we're so close to having all of the third-party series that really, really defined early Nintendo. And, like, that is one of, that is the biggest missing one to me. Yeah, I think I can get on board with that. We've got Mega Man. We've got Castlevania. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think if there are any of those, like, huge, like, really big, just early third-party Nintendo games that uh, we don't have yet other than Dragon Quest. I mean, there are other, like, Square Enix JRPGs that, like, sure. were, like, one-offs and stuff. Oh, I like, mean, so many people have talked about how great it would be to be see, like, Chrono in Smash Brothers, and I agree. That would be awesome. Chrono would be really cool. I just don't think he's going to out-prioritize Dragon Quest. Honestly, I don't think he would even out-prioritize Sora if Sora was on the table. <sighs> we had the Sora discussion. I don't need to go back into it. <laughs> well, because it, yes, it is kind of a thing of like it is just kind of what we were feeling about third party reps and just basically has it changed at all since seeing the final roster and seeing like what they're doing with spirits and stuff yeah in a lot of ways it hasn't changed I still think the most like I think Square Enix uh, is the most likely third party for us to get a rep mm-hmm. uh, as DLC did we uh, did we talk about Namco I, I think like we kind of touched on briefly them. oh i'm actually really expecting heiachi i i'm feeling it um i think i don't know man yeah boy um i mean the thing the first thing is just in general i said even if we're not talking about like oh you know oh man capcom has three characters and K- konami has three characters it is a little bit weird to me that like namco only has one just because just from the standpoint that Namco does have more to offer. I mean, Heihachi's one thing, but I mean, there's, I mean, I really like Tales as well. Tales is of, you know, either Symphonia or, no, probably Symphonia for Nintendo, but still. For a second, like, I was like, why are we going back to Sega? Yeah, I had to, I had to reiterate. <laughs> uh, no, I'm talking about the Tales of series. But that's that's what I'm trying to get around to is like Namco has more stuff to offer, more good stuff that really makes sense to me for Smash Brothers. So I mean, Heihachi's always been kind of one of my perspective things for Smash Brothers Ultimate. So I still think that's very much a possibility. It's something that Sakurai's wanted. Uh, it's Namco's directly involved with the game. He could fit the slot that Ryu fit for four. Um. It just, it, it seems, it feels like one of those things to me where, like, it, it just feels like something that needs to happen. Okay. Like, it's just the way it is. Like, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I'm just like, yeah, no, this, like, makes sense. This, like, this, like, feels like it's something that should be there. Because the other, like, big fighting franchise they have is Soul Calibur, and I just, like, Tekken is bigger than gonna, that. That's not going to out-prioritize Tekken. Yeah. I can't even Te- Tekken is that. bigger than that, and we already know that Sakurai has a preference for Heihachi. Oh, wait. One other big one we're missing. Well, two. One big company with two possibilities. Okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Talking about Microsoft. We got Banjo-Kazooie, and we got Minecraft. And there have been people that are very certain of both of those characters. Banjo-Kazooie has had so much flying around in, like, the Twitter sphere and stuff. Some of it's stoked by Microsoft themselves. I have a hard time imagining that, like, it wouldn't be something they would try to go for. Oh, God, I sure hope it happens. That is, like, for me, the next character that's, like, a real dream come true. 
where I'm just like, oh my god. I was never huge on Banjo Kazooie, but like, I understand why people want him. And it's just seeing the way that everybody's been talking about him for so long, he, how long he's been requested, how on board Microsoft seems to be with the whole thing. Like, it, it's 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 almost at a Heihachi level where I'm just like, it just kind of feels like something that needs to happen. <laughs> oh man, I really hope it happens. I really hope one of the five DLC characters is Banjo-Kazooie. And then there's Minecraft, and this has been weird. There's been a lot of rumors of this happening. There's been rumors since, like, the beginning of the Vergman leaks that there could be Minecraft content in Smash. Uh, and now there's even more rumors that they might be adding Steve from Minecraft in Smash. And I think it totally makes sense. There are some people who are like, oh, that's stupid. Oh, they never do that. And I can't see that. I think having Minecraft in Smash Brothers is something that really makes sense to me. It just doesn't. That's... That's the opposite spectrum from Badger kazooie for me. That's something that really does not interest me. <laughs> the thing is that I just don't feel like Steve... ...as a character... ...brings a lot of hype with him. Like, I feel like the appeal to Minecraft isn't in, like, Steve. It isn't in the playable character. The appeal to Minecraft is in... ...the environment. And so I feel like it's one of those things where it'd be better represented by, like, a, a stage or something, and... Bergman even said, like, he wasn't sure that it was, like, a character, just some kind of Minecraft content. And, like, hmm. it is possible that if Banjo-Kazooie comes along, that could come with some Microsoft, like, spirits and stuff, and possibly music and stages from other series. Although I doubt music, although I doubt stages, but maybe music. Yeah, probably not for Minecraft. Yeah. Um, so that that is possible. But it's just, like, I don't know, when I look at it, like, when you look at them as characters... Banjo-Kazooie is more of an iconic character. Whereas Steve, like, yeah, everybody will obviously recognize that he's from Minecraft. Like, he will be recognized in that way. But, like, he feels like less of a character to me. It's not as bad as, like, Monster Hunter when it comes to that. But, like, I still no. feel like it's that kind of thing where, like, he doesn't feel like a huge iconic character. Because he kind of is just sort of a stand-in for your generic avatar. So probably one of the most probably one of the most ultimate examples of that actually. <laughs> yeah, it's just weird. I, I I don't know. Like it's I. It just it feels like the hype would be a lot less than with Banjo Kazooie. But then it's weird because you know it, it figures if if we would have gotten non playable character content like we got with the Rathalos, you know, if we just gotten uh, an assist trophy or a stage or enemies or something, it feels like we would have already uh, seen it in the base game. Maybe, but maybe it's special because it is Microsoft. So they're waiting for if they do have like another DLC character with that, like you were saying. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's possible. It's just, it's, I just don't know. It's like the main yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay, I have two individual. Oh, I know who you're talking uh, about. Third party characters that I always like to mention. I know who we're talking about. Number one, Rayman. Rayman. And number two, hey, Haruhi Suzumiya. That's right, my favorite anime. Wait a second. Uh, no, man. I mean, okay. I am biased towards Rayman. Rayman was a series I grew up with, uh, and I like it a lot. But um, I, I do think that you know we have seen there is a, a bit of partnership, right, with with Nintendo and with Ubisoft, and so that does bring up kind of like a, like with Microsoft, it's like. Well, are we going to get more third-party characters from new places that, you know, aren't just Square and Capcom and Konami and stuff? And if they do, I think one of the biggest ones they could go to would be Ubisoft. And, I mean, we've already seen... This is the interesting thing. We've already seen Ubisoft spirits because there is a Rabid Peach spirit that's already been shown off. So, like, we've seen that, but no Rayman stuff yet. So people are, are kind of questioning that. They're like, oh, are they gonna, is this building up to a Rayman and Smash Brothers? And I really would love that. I think it's definitely possible. You know, he, he had a trophy in four. He did. So like- Along with uh, Glowbox and Barbara. It would make a lot of sense, honestly. I think he's also one of the ones that's up there. I think so too. Is your other one Crash Bandicoot? 
It is not, because I have no personal relationship with Crash Bandicoot. Spyro the Dragon? No. Sly Cooper? No. The Lost Vikings? No. Toe Jam and or Earl? No. Brave Fencer Musashi? No. John Madden? No. Satoru Iwata? That's... Does that really count as third party? I think it's beyond third parties at that point. <laughs> no, um, I'm actually thinking of my other, my other big one from a new company, or just from a company that's not in Smash Brothers, um, is Ryu Hayabusa. Oh, yeah. I honestly feel he's less likely than Crash Bandicoot. Okay. Just because I don't think... I, I just don't think there's that many people, like, clamoring for him. I feel like he's faded over the years a lot more than a lot of the third parties we talk about. Probably. For me, it's, like, not as much as Dragon Quest. Not nearly as much as Dragon Quest. But that's, like, the next in line for me for, like, the big third-party franchises from early Nintendo. Is Ninja Gaiden uh, having its big trilogy on the NES. Um, not to mention being kind of the mascot character of Tecmo, who is another big company that Nintendo has done a lot of partnerships with that isn't represented in Smash Brothers at all. I think he's possible. I just think there just doesn't seem to be that much of a buzz for him. Probably not. I think if he was announced, there would be hype. Oh, yeah. But I think, I a, lot of people, <laughs> but I think a lot of people just don't actively think about him as much as a lot of these other options. I see. If he did come out, though, yeah, I think that a lot of people would be on board with it. Oh, man, I would love that. So, looking at it, genuinely, I think we actually could make a solid 5 DLC uh, roster out of just these third-party characters. Oh, easily. You know, if, you're, if you're talking Banjo-Kazooie, uh, Square Enix, most likely Dragon Quest. And then and then you have Heihachi? Yeah, Heihachi. Uh, Rayman. Rayman. And then Ryu Hayabusa. Ryu Hayabusa. And that's five already. <laughs> that's Tails five, but then that, that's six. not even thinking about Crash Bandicoot. That's not even thinking about a second Sonic character. Like, there's... There are genuinely enough options out there that are iconic and uh, requested by people and tied to Nintendo in some way. Uh, that you could make this roster entirely third party and people would still be happy with it. Oh, for sure. I don't know if I want it to be all third party or not. Um, I, oh boy, I really like Elma. <laughs> that's fair. Just like looking at it, like, I think, the, the, I mean, the one I want the most is Gino. Right. Like, here's the thing, this is something I was actually talking about earlier, is I was like, I don't, I don't think any of my most wanted have actually gotten in since, like, Melee. Really? Yeah. Because, like, my most wanted have, have for a long time been uh, Gino, Tingle, Isaac, and Ray. Isaac and Ray aren't happening. <laughs> Tingle's got a, a slight chance. Gino, I think, is still pretty likely. Um, you know, uh, I have not talked to anyone in a long time about Paper Mario. I, I think that buzz died down. I, I never understood why... He got so much buzz in the first place. Oh, really? Yeah, I just, I never saw why people would want that over another actually wholly unique character. I feel like you said something funny, but I couldn't hear it. I never understood why people would want him over uh, another character that was actually, like, wholly unique, you know? Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, wasn't anything funny. I don't say anything funny. Oh. In case you can't tell, uh, Discord has been really crappy, um, and it's just been dropping voices the whole time, so we're trying, we're, we're, we're like, playing telephone this whole conversation, so it sounds a little weird. Yeah, this, the conversation's pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah, so if, it's, so, if it, so if it sounds a little weird to you, that's probably why. It's it's really interrupted the flow of our conversation, and it's really frustrating, but we're recording it. Here we are. I'm not, I'm not about to wipe uh, in an hour and a half of, uh, of, of recording to do again for this, because uh, I'm not getting paid for this. Do you think that there will be another wave of DLC after this first five? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, if I had to give yes or no, I would say no. I think, ultimately, it's going to depend on how well this sells. 
I think if it does really, really well, I have a hard time imagining that, uh, that the business part of Nintendo wouldn't, you know, make the creative end of Nintendo do another wave of DLC. Here's my thinking. Here's my thinking. Two things. Uh, for one, Smash 4 had seven DLC characters. Uh, three of them were veterans, and only three of them came with new stages. This, if you include Piranha Plant, is six wholly unique, brand new characters, five of which are coming with new stages and music. So when you balance them out, it's definitely more content as it is than Smash 4 already had as DLC, not counting things like me costumes and stuff like that that they also added. So I think it balances out as it is compared to Smash 4's DLC. On top of that, the secondly, um, I mean, maybe Smash Brothers will be different, but it's not like we saw either Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey like really, really expand on its DLC. You know, they did they did a couple things for Breath of the Wild, and then they were done. And they did some costumes for Mario uh, uh, Odyssey, and they did the Luigi update, and they were done. You know what I mean? They haven't been like really, really heavily handed on them. So I don't know. If I'm proven wrong, obviously I'm not going to complain, but I I'm assuming right now that these five DLC characters are 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 that. I think I'm mostly wondering about it just because of that what Sakurai said about like Nintendo gave me this list. Like if it's not them calling the shots, if if it's not Sakurai calling the shots, I, I just have a hard time imagining that if it really is the 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 investors or the business end of the company that's deciding this, I don't know why they would stop. Because like with, with with the Wii U, like with Smash Four, the Wii U they they backed out on pretty fast, and so I think that's yeah. clearly why the DLC ended there. But the Switch looks like it's going to have a much longer life, and like continuing to support that with DLC if they can keep it going for as long as possible like they could milk smash for a long time I think there is also if it does reach that point if if Sakurai makes these five DLC characters and there's a question about if they're going to do a wave two I think we might have a serious discussion back then if Sakurai is going to be on board with that um or you know is he going to want to you know just take a break or work on a different project that isn't Smash Brothers or and if he decides that like if Nintendo is willing to still do new DLC for Smash Brothers without his guidance uh, I think those things might start coming into play if from a business perspective they decide to do a wave 2 I think if, if Sakurai stepped aside they would absolutely still keep making DLC okay they, they wouldn't they wouldn't let the they wouldn't let it stop just because Sakurai didn't want to do it. Right. I mean, obviously, you know, Sakurai doesn't work alone. He's got a team, and so I'm sure they can put it together. It's just, it's going to feel a little weird for me. <laughs> hey, I just came across somebody's uh, prediction for the five DLC characters. I'm seeing a lot of those on Twitter. Uh, this one is uh, Slime, uh -huh. Banjo and Kazooie, mm -hmm. Chorus Kids, Okay. Joker, All right. and Heihachi. All right. I don't know how I feel about slime. We've had that whole discussion before. Uh, I think people are more open about it now because we have Piranha Plant. True. It's it's not like a can he work thing for me. It's no that, that, slime can absolutely work, and he's basically the mascot character of the Dragon Quest series. That said, I'm still much more interested in Erdrick because I want to actually play as a Dragon Quest hero. But slime makes absolute sense. That's fair because. Imagine if we got Piranha Plant without having other Mario characters. That's well. That's exactly the the, the correlation I use. It's like, yes. Imagine if you got Piranha Plant in Smash Brothers sixty four before Mario. That would be weird. Yeah, it's only after we've like have like this huge roster of like a bunch of the mainstay Mario characters that we then got to like Piranha Plant. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think that there will be additional free DLC? 
Maybe. I mean, Smash 4 just kind of randomly threw in a Mario Maker stage. And then there's also potential for, like, me costumes, maybe more music updates. I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, we've seen them embrace, like, the concept with, uh, with Splatoon and stuff like that. So I think it wouldn't be completely... Right out of the question because like when you've got things like echoes like an echo would be something that would be incredibly easy to develop and 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 release for free if they wanted to do like some kind of echo for promotional character or something um that, that that's one of the best that's going to be one of the best advertising platforms they have is smash which is probably the largest game they're going to have on the console because there were things like me costumes and all that because they seem to have like a very set structure for the way the dlc is going to work like it's like okay you've got the fighter the stages uh, you got the fighter, their stage, and the music. It's like, okay, what about me costumes? What about, um, what about spirits? You know, what what about this other side content? Will that be? Will you also do DLC packs that aren't these fighters that will have like other minor things? Are we just not going to have more me costumes? You know, stuff like that. Right. That's what I've been wondering. I love that Katamari is coming out physically the same day as Smash. <laughs> yeah. In, in a month and a day from now, as of the time of the recording. Oh, man. I'm so excited. I don't know which one I'm going to play first. It's going to be Smash, because we're probably going to be streaming when it comes out. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I guess that basically wraps up the whole discussion. I can't think of anything else. Thank you for joining us for this technologically challenged uh, edition of Smash Talk. <laughs> it's actually it's 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 normal now. I'm not missing any yeah. words now. Now that we're done, now that we're done, it's functioning. Like you're coming through clearly for me too. Uh, as I sit behind uh, my as I sit behind my mic like Leafy. Oh my god! I just realized we'll pro we might do another one. I've been thinking about doing just like kind of a live smash talk like close to release, where we just live stream for like an hour or two and just like have people ask questions and just talk back to everybody. And I mean, like, talk so. back, like, like, just say some real mean shit. Yeah, that's right. Um, I did have an idea of, like, wanting to talk with you maybe about just doing the video, just talking about the concept of leaks. And just, like, mm. w the way it affects Smash and, like, the speculation and everything. And, like, is it a good or a bad thing? And just, like, that whole thing, because I found it really interesting. Um, but I don't know about that. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Join our discords. Join the discords. The fun doesn't have to end here. I can't think of anything funny. Why am I so drained tonight? I just feel dumb and boring tonight. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I, I just, I don't... Oh, God. I do not feel interesting. I'm just wrapping this up. What am I doing? All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. Have a Bye.